Hello and welcome everybody to the Twins Off Daily Podcast brought to you by TwinsDaily.com. I'm your host for today's episode, Sweet Lou Hennessy, and I'm gathered here with two of my best compadres from TwinsDaily.com, the uh, finest source of all uh, independent Twins coverage, all the best independent Twins coverage, I should say. Um, I'm here with uh, the one and only Mr. Gregory T. Masterson. How are you, Greg? I'm doing terrific, and since uh, this opening has kind of become uh, my Manuel Margot pinch hitting watch, I just want to update the uh, the stat line. Um, how Manuel Margot has gone this year? We're at 31 plate appearances without a hit. That's 27 at bats. He has four walks, so 27 at bats, zero hits as a pinch hitter for our good friend Manny Magoo. Great trade, Falvey. Great trade. No, we, we love our rain. Don't cone. We love our boy. We love our boys. I should say, don't forget rain. Don't forget the rain, man. <laughs> um, I'm also gathered here with uh, uh, somebody who is making their twins off daily podcast debut. That's Mr. Adam Freeman. What's going on, Adam? Hey, um, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I feel like it's every twins daily writer's dream to be on this podcast. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Um, Set your aim higher. Obviously, having an off day after a game like today is always a bummer, but uh, hopefully we can cheer some people up. Yeah, we'll, hopefully. We'll that's make them more sad. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, we're going to do it really well. Um, so uh, thank you, dear listeners, for uh, being here with us. We're excited to talk about some Twins topics on this, their off day before a truly pivotal series against the Cleveland Guardians at home. But we will get to that more in a little bit. But let's talk about our walk-off question that we are going to try to answer at the end of today's episode. And that is, besides ball player. What is the best job to have at the ballpark? We'll say even just target field specifically. What is the best job to have at target field? So think about that. We'll try to come up with some answers by the end of the episode. But for right now, let's hop on down to our rapid recap since our last show. Okay, so the uh, Twins performed as expected against one of the Chicago teams that they faced. That was the Chicago White Sox, the uh, godless Chicago White Sox, as Randball Stu likes to call them at TwinsDaily.com. And you could see why after this three-game series, uh, it was a debacle after debacle after debacle. And uh, the Twins came out with three wins against their division rival. And then they went on down to Chicago to face the Cubs. They've picked up a quick win, and then, hey, Chicago, what do you say? This series really got away, and they lost the last two. So let's talk about it. Who's hot? Who's not? What did we think about these last two series? Greg, let's start with you. Any big takeaways? Yeah, by and large, the offense has been looking terrific. I want to give a shout out to the whole offense. But also, again, I I feel like every week for the last – or every show for the last couple months, I've been beating the – Wow, Christian Vasquez is actually hitting the ball drum. Uh, he had a home run a couple games ago, um, which is nice to see. He has been, I don't know, like the the bar is pretty low for Christian Vasquez right now. Um, but he has been performing so well, um, better than we kind of had hoped. He's been very hot for quite a few weeks, but like the the whole offense right now is just going kind of bananas. Uh, Matt Walner has been killing the ball. Um, it's uh, I, I saw a stat uh, earlier this week that basically uh, Matt Walner, when he makes contact, which is a big if, but when he makes contact, he is doing damage at the same rate as Aaron Judge. Right. Um, he is among the leaders in the league in bat speed. Mm-hmm. It is just kind of crazy to see Matt Walner on these types of runs. Royce Lewis has also just been killing the ball. Um, it, it's uh, it's fun to watch kind of um, this offense kind of as a whole right now. Um, it was a little rough t- uh, at the bottom of the lineup today or yesterday when you're listening to this. But as a whole, I like where the offense is right now. Okay. You know, you brought up some interesting topics. You know, Christian Vasquez, you know, he's been 
outperforming Jeffers at a considerable rate for the last what we, few weeks, months, maybe I, like month, it's, it's become a, a lot closer. Yeah. He's uh, you know, and really we've, like you said, the bar is so low for him that anything he provides with this offense just kind of seems like icing on the cake, kind of seems like gravy, but we will, we will absolutely take that from him. Um, and unfortunately you're seeing him kind of suck some of that power away from Ryan Jeffers. It feels like they can never be clicking at the same time, but we can only yeah. have one catcher between the two of them. There can only be one. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, Adam, what do we think? Any initial thoughts over uh, of the last couple series, anybody sticking out to you as somebody hot, somebody not, what do you think? Just in general, um, Twins All-Star Willie Castro has been a bit disappointing for a while now. Um, he's got like an 81, 82 WRC plus since July 1st. Um, he was really driving the Twins offense for a while there, and now he's not. And now without Buxton for who knows how long, who knows what's going on. Um, Royce Lewis, we don't know what's going on. Correa, we need to we need Castro to step up and join Matt Walner at the party. Um, Matt Walner, since he came back up, is just unbelievable. He's pretty much hit for any significant sample size in his career. Um, big boy hits the ball hard. That's very aesthetically pleasing in my in my opinion. I know Greg likes that top type of player too. Big dude dings dongs. And, yes. uh, like last year, I went to spring training and we saw him working on one of those like spin machines, and the guy was dripping in sweat, just working so hard, and it's not surprising to see him kind of find it again. Um, the other one I had down, oh, I was just kind of pulling the Twins offense um, WRC Plus since July, and Diego A. Castillo actually will probably finish the season with a 191 WRC Plus, so that's uh, yes. that's fun. Um, if Maybe if he was more, had a higher prospect pedig- pedigree, people would be playing. <laughs> Read Diego A. Castillo. <laughs> I heard the cheap polats are holding him back for financial reasons. So the arbitration well. numbers are just going to get too high. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, numbers don't lie. Diego A. Castillo, unsung hero yeah, of the 2024 Twins season. It was like that um that the, that Gilberto Celestino run last <laughs> year where it was just dinks and dunks. And How could you forget? Sustainable. How could we forget? Oh man! Oh, no, you brought up some good points. Of Hilberto Celestino, uh, did you guys hear that he got hit in the head by a Zebby Matthews fastball and that. had to leave the game in AAA? No. Oh, that's no, like not- I I don't know. Now that like I I saw that I memory hold it. I never did any research, so I hope Hilberto Celestino he was is okay. Away. He was okay, I believe. Okay, um, uh, but yeah, he. I got- always thought he would click, and and. Um, Nash and I would always be texting about about when, about it clicking for Roberto Celestino, but um, it seems like we got that one wrong. So it's too bad. we'll see. There's still time. He's yeah. he's still he's young. like 24 or something still. <laughs> he it's only has 10 games at Double A. Or, no, I'm just I'm sure <laughs> to stay with him. Um, <laughs> let's. You brought up some really good points. Matt Walner is it's so crazy how you know it was such a small sample size when he got sent down, but like I do think it was necessary. He looked pretty lost in I know it was what 25 30 plate appearances mm-hmm. or whatever it was, but like somebody had to go down at that point and he wasn't really clicking and he had options left. And it's a pretty quick trip down the green line, it didn't seem like that major of a deal. But since coming back up, it's so crazy how he just like skyrocketed to like the leaderboards of the twins offense. Uh, and it's great to see. Uh, I, I'm happy. I'm happy he's still around here. I thought he was somebody who could have reasonably been shopped at the trade deadline to, you know, be a pretty decent piece of something coming back. But uh, alas, he's still with us, and that's okay because he's killing it, and he's going to need to keep that hot bat as they go into this pivotal four-game series against the Cleveland Guardians starting on Friday with a doubleheader. Um, let's talk about that a little bit quick. Um, Cleveland has been scuffling in the last couple of weeks. I mean, think about how lousy of a game it was today for the Twins. They gained ground on the Guardians. Uh, so it's it, it's it, things ain't pretty for them either. They're really banged up, especially in their starting rotation. So I don't know. This could be a snowball fight this weekend. We'll see what happens. But uh, Greg, what do we think? Any any initial thoughts on the Cleveland series, or just how it's all led up to this? Yeah. So I'm not a. I think that they released the probables for the series today, and so it's going to be 
Louis Varland coming up um, and Bailey Ober. I'm not sure which is going to throw which game of the double header um, right. tomorrow as you listen to this. Um, then following that, I believe will be uh, Simeon Woods Richardson. And then following that will be David Festa. Now that is not exactly a murderer's row of pitchers that the twins are sending out for this series. Um, so, you know, it would, it would be nice if, uh, I, and we'll talk about Joe Ryan a little later, but it would be nice if Lopez and Ryan were pitching at least one of those games. But I mean, this is a huge opportunity for the twins. I, I would go so far as to say, like, if they got swept in this four game series, uh, say goodbye to the AL central race. Um, the range of outcomes here is wild. They could gain as many as four games or they can lose as many as four games. This, each game is essentially like worth two games in the standings where if you win, you go up a game. And if you lose, you go down a game. So the swing there is uh, two full games. Um, so if, if they were, if they can pull off like th three out of four here, they go three and one, like they split the double header and then win the other two games. Like we are setting up for a real race. I mean, they could be within one and a half games of the division lead at that point. So I'm I'm super excited. I am super excited to watch this play out. I mean, if you are if you are the twins, you want your season to kind of be coming down to things like this. There's gonna be another four game series in September, but like yep. you've got the you've got the season in your hands. Like this is a moment that you can kind of control your own destiny. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, win or lose. Um, I have fun whenever the stakes get high, even if the twins are doing bad. So yeah, even, you know, even though the twins themselves are banged up right now in a few different areas, uh, we're catching Cleveland at a bad time. And I think that's even more important than who's missing from the twins lineup. Cause we've seen, we've seen some pretty good depth from them so far this year at various points. Uh, yeah, like you said, it's, uh, it says a lot. And I think the players really jump at this opportunity to play their, you know, biggest rival in a four game series like it is. So, uh, I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a hot weekend at Target Field. But, uh, Adam, what do you think? Any initial thoughts before we head, uh, to face off on Cleveland here? It's exciting that we have um, our best pitcher probably pitching on Friday in Bailey Ober. Yeah. Um, yep. I feel like that's not even a hot take at this point. Sure. People don't. People are going to always underestimate him because of his prospect pedigree and because his velocity is not that um, eye popping. But the guy is really good. Um, Alex Cobb kind of makes me nervous that we're going to see another. It just feels like a guy that's going to be really frustrating to face, and all of a sudden we're going to look up and the Twins are going to have done nothing. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Um, we have Ireland. I mean, I just, and they, there's just so many question marks, the twins pitching, but between Festo, we put Richardson and Barland, we're just going to have to see what they do. It could, they could all blow up. Honestly, I, I have no idea. I, I, I believe all of them long-term to sure. uh, but right now, I mean, against the lefty heavy lineup against Stephen Kwan, against Andres Jimenez, I mean, I don't really like the Guardians like everybody else, but <laughs> the, double magic, the double magic works. Um, so yep. hopefully they, they play some good good baseball. I think if they, they need to clean up the defense, that's been disappointing to see. Yes. It's going to happen throughout the summer. Um, if they do that, then they'll have a chance. But the Guardians are the last team you want to play poor defense against because they – are scrappy and annoying. They, they take advantage. Hard. They like the piranhas, as Ozzy um, yep. once said about the twins. You bring up a really good point with Alex Cobb. He just seems like is he? I forget. Is he starting Saturday? I know he's starting either Friday, the second her, game or Saturday. Her Bobby Nightingale um, today. Alex Cobb is starting on Friday. On Friday, in game one against Bailey Over. In game one, okay. That could be an ultra, ultra frustrating game because it yeah. feels like one where I know they have plenty of data on him and uh, yeah. you know, even from his rehab and even from just recent years work. But like there's not a ton on him this year. And it just seems like one of those where he doesn't have the best stuff, but he's just going to dominate the lineup because they don't have enough video data to it's like. Cool. I, I, people hate on him. I don't really get it. He's been above average pretty much every year for the last four um, he was definitely somebody I was eyeing before this season started as like a, okay, the twins don't have great pitching. 
Maybe we can get him at the deadline. I am totally fine with them not getting him, but in terms of one game against Cleveland, I just he freaks me out. <laughs> All right, Adam Friedman noted uh, gob, cob snob. So uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, I do want to really quick um, point out that because we mentioned Festa and Woods Richardson, they've kind of been going in opposite directions over the last couple of weeks. Um, really hoping that Sim kind of uh, comes back into form a little bit and Festa can continue this. I, I think we do need to shout out like he went five innings against the Cubs, a major league lineup and struck out. What was it? 11 hitters. No, not nine. Sorry. Nine, nine hitters. Um, it's easy to kind of smoke and mirror your ways through a start. It is hard to strike out nine guys in five innings and have it be completely smoke and mirrors. So um, yeah, oh, and his stuff looked great. It looked yeah. awesome. He was he had great control, which is you know something that you're looking for with Festa. And uh, he he wriggled out of some jams, which I think is even more important for a young pitcher to show that they can do. Um, so you're right. I I, I definitely think uh, Festa is going to play a huge part in this. Was there something else to that, Greg? Did you have more? I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, that was it. Okay. Um, well, while we're talking about the uh, starting rotation, let's move on over to our big inning topic. Oh. Uh, and that unfortunately is that in game three against the Cubs twins starter, Joe Ryan left in the third inning with uh, clear discomfort after throwing a splitter uh, to, to open that inning there uh, and just, you know, pointed to the dugout. They came and got him pretty much right away. Um, I, I, we can't say too much about any initial diagnosis, but there's a little bit of optimism it seems like, uh, but still it's never fun to see a pitcher come out with clear discomfort. I think they described it as tricep discomfort, which could mean a lot of different things um, and doesn't necessarily all signs point to, you know, one disaster or anything like that, but uh, still it's concerning because uh, he was, he was rolling um, for the, for a little while here. And he's somebody that the twins are going to rely on down the stretch if he's healthy. And if he's not healthy, that's a really big hole in a place where they really don't need one. Uh, so what are some, just some general thoughts that you guys have on the Joe Ryan potential injury and just the, you know, rotation hierarchy in general, what does this mean for our starting rotation? If Joe Ryan does indeed need to miss some time, uh, let's start with you, Adam. What do you, what do you think about this? I know that you have some thoughts on, uh, on this initially. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's just a big bummer because it's Joe Ryan, but everybody loves him. He's a very popular player and he had, through July had, you know, finally kind of put it together as a frontline starter for pretty much the entire season. And then that happens. I mean, I'd hate to be so negative, but until he's pitching in the major leagues again, I'm not going to really buy into the optimism. Obviously it's better than hearing that you got MRI and he needs Tommy John, but I mean, we've seen, Oh, are you all right? Um, don't say it. Don't say it. Uh, we've seen this, you know, song and dance before. Obviously, yeah. Ryan's been healthy, and he's athletic, and he's flexible with his with water polo stuff. But just um, pitchers are fickle, and uh, yeah, it yeah. Just sucks. <laughs> You sound like a hurt Twins fan, uh, you know, somebody who has seen this kind of scenario too often. And yeah. Adam, who hurt you? Who hurt you? Do you? How much time do you have? Yeah. Dylan Bundy, Chris <laughs> Oh, man. Greg, what do we think? Any initial thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, so first of all, I want to say uh, this is why you don't ramp down Louis Varland in April yes. and make him a setup man. I mean, all, all signs are pointing to him probably, probably joining the rotation. Right. Um, if, if I was, if I were to be a betting man, I mean, the other options would be uh, like Randy Dobnik or Caleb Bosley. Um, Your guy. If you, if you uh, really got desperate, I guess like you could, uh, I don't know. I've, I've seen that like Ronnie Henriquez has started a couple games. Um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Adam Plutko is down there. Um, if you were absolutely... What's that? You're not going to say the Z word? I was about to say, like, if you're desperate, desperate, mm -hmm. you can uh, see what Zebby Matthews has got in him. But, like, that is not where you want to be when you're in a pennant race down the stretch. Um, 
So shout out to the twins for uh, not being um, super reckless and understanding that having starting pitching depth is great. Even if, even if Louis Varland is apparently the greatest setup man in the history of twins baseball, as some might lead you to believe um, shout out to the twins for not ramping him down in April and yes. just making him uh, Griffin Jackson's best friend. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean like if, and I mean, I, I, I try not to speculate on this stuff because there's so much information out there that we don't have. I would, I, until he pitches, like Adam said, I'm not counting on him to be around. Um, and, you know, uh, it's tricep soreness. So, you know, it could be a lot worse, but we still don't really have an answer. I'm, I'm guessing he's going to miss time. Um, this kind of shows, I mean, if you were the person who was uh, saying that the Twins should have found a starting pitcher to add to the rotation at the trade deadline. You're somewhat vindicated here, even if it wasn't, you know, I some even somebody like Michael Lorenzen, you know, you probably feel a little bit or considerably better about your rotation with at least like a, an established guy in that spot. Um, because, you know, your top three uh, with Lopez, Ryan and over like that is a legitimate top three. But after that, there was a huge question mark. And if, and I saw this kind of being thrown around. If there were to be an injury, and sure enough, you know, a week later there was an injury, what would be the response? And now it's, you know, hopefully Louis Varland has kind of figured his stuff out at AAA. Um, the Dauber has not looked great uh, in his relief appearances. He's, for some reason, Randy Dobnak can't find the strike zone, which I feel like is the first time in his entire career that this has happened. Mm. Um but it's just it's just a mess. Uh, and you, if you want to make a run in the playoffs, you have to have a healthy Joe Ryan. Like, period. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna get nearly as far as you want to if you only have you know Lopez and Ober, and then the rest of your rotation is like hoping that David Festa has some rookie magic going. So I don't know, man. It's it's tricky. Obviously, yes, I hope Joe Ryan is healthy and is making a start in the playoffs for the Twins, but. Honestly, I don't I don't see them trusting him with a full start just like they did last year when they pretty much let him go through the lineup once, which he's incredible at. He's one of the best at limiting hits in those first time through the batting order. Uh, and he has been ever since he debuted, basically. I saw him being a short start uh, in the playoffs uh, just based Your on hater. trusting him. I'm a, oh, well, we'll see about that. But, uh, you know... It also should be talked about just the, you know, with the depth here and whether we're comfortable with, you know, the potential replacements for Joe Ryan. We were going to have to see these replacements at some point anyway, in all likelihood. We were going to have to see them, whether that was for Ryan or for somebody else needing some rest or Simeon Woods Richardson coming up on any sort of innings limitation, potentially Festa too. You know, they're approaching their career highs, I got to think at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were going to see some of these backup plans at some point. Uh, let's just hope that it's not for the entirety of the remainder of the season. Um, well, okay. Unless they're really clicking. Who knows? They really could be. Um, the Louis, any yeah. The Louis Varland downstream effect is just kind of a bummer because the bullpen still has a lot of guys in it that you would not want to be pitching in the seventh inning of game against Cleveland in a pivotal game against Cleveland. Um, so not having the option to shorten him up um, in the next few weeks um, is a bummer. Um, but Greg, you're right. They were responsible to, uh, by not, by not jumping the gun on that. Um, and, you know, I, one quick note on the payroll, obviously this is the kind of type of thing they have not a lot of um, flexibility by bringing back the rotation that they brought back and relying on Chris Paddock and everything. And it's kind of seems to be a problem, but maybe Louis Varland and David Festa and Simeon, Simeon with Richardson will uh, make it all okay. Yeah. Or David, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Any, uh, any last thoughts on this topic before we move on guys? We're doomed. <laughs> We're no. doomed. It's Jover. It's Jover. <laughs> Permission to take it up to 11. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we put a nice little bow on that. I think it'll be fun to watch, though, for sure. I, I'm hoping this will be one of those classic series at Target Field where it's like, you know, the heat of the summer. You I know, I'm thinking wait. about the, the 2019 Yankees series at Target <laughs> Field, which yeah. wasn't fun as well, wise, but was awesome. Was, was so fun. much fun to, to watch. I'm hoping it's fun to care. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. It's super fun to care. Um, 
Well, let's move on then to our next segment, which is Picks to Click. We all know about Picks to Click. We pick a new category every week or every episode to track uh, between this point and our next episode. Um, Since last week, last Thursday, we were trying to track what will be higher the Twins team batting average or the Twins pitching staff batting average allowed. So uh, it was just Greg and I. We were a little bit of a skeleton crew last week, and this was actually the tiebreaker for our leaderboard because Greg and I were both sitting atop the list at five apiece, and Greg selected the Twins Hitty, uh, twins group of hitters uh, to have a better batting average, and they had a 261 batting average, which was uh, 10th in all of baseball. So, you know, pretty solid week. We'll take that. Uh, and obviously, I was left with the pitching staff, and they allowed a 201 batting average, which was the fourth lowest in Major League Baseball. Good for the Twins pitching staff, good for the Twins, bad for Sweet Lou. Greg comes out on top, and he breaks the tie, uh, leaving us with an all-time standings of Greg at the top with six, Lou at five, Matt Trueblood with one, Peter Labuza at one, Cherry Sarnia one, Matt Braun at one, Theo Tollefson at one, Nick Nelson, Melissa Berman, and oh, Cody Shoneman has He's not won a single is, round. Is that, cor- is that correct? That can't Cody be. Cody right. hasn't won a single. Oh dear! You know, if he doesn't show up for shows, he can't win. So that's true. It, yeah. it just keeps going. That snake. Um, but let's talk about our uh, next picks that we are going to click here, um, and that is going to be by next episode, which is going to be August twenty second. How many games back of Cleveland will the Twins be at that point? So we're just going to kind of go closest to the pin on this one. Uh, the Twins have exactly, well, what did we say, Greg? 13 games? 14 it's games? 13 games for the Twins between okay. now and then. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's it's it could be a pretty wide range here. But uh, let's start with the rookie, Adam. What do you think? What do you think the standings are going to look like at this point, uh, August 22nd? I'm going to say two games, I think. Okay. The Twins will win this series three out of four. I was looking kind of at both teams' schedules. Neither of them have really any layups between now and then. Um, okay. The worst team that Cleveland faces, I think, is the Cubs, who we saw as our yeah. mediocre. And both teams play Texas, who's the champions, but also below 500. So, I mean, I think the whole serve, the Twins kind of – looking at the schedule, have an opportunity early in September to really turn it on. Um, and if they don't, and then they, then they play Cleveland again. So, yeah, um, it's, hey, it's hey. fun. Um, and, you know, I'll never forget, I was probably like 11 years old in the 2000, in 2009 or 2010 when they came back. 2009, they came back yeah. yep, with yep. Um, almost no games left. And then obviously they played that that game. That yeah. Forget, so who knows? Hey. But hopefully they'll get, put themselves in good position. If they're within two games of Cleveland uh, in two weeks from now, that's that's solid. That that means some pretty competitive play, or just both teams cratering, uh, which would also be really interesting. So, uh, Greg, what do we think? Well, Cleveland is playing both the Cubs and the Yankees between now and then, and so we know that they're really good. Because that's why the Twins haven't really I, what are they on the year uh, one and nine against those two teams so those those teams they are world-class organizations um it's going to be really hard for cleveland to win any games against them um i don't know i uh, i want to be controversial and say like the twins are going to be up uh on cleveland two weeks from today but i don't i don't i'm not ready to put my money where my mouth was on that they're going to be five games behind cleveland five two weeks from t- today Okay. Sounds good. Um, We aren't even talking about the fact that they might not even be trailing Cleveland at that point. We're, we're talking about just this. Said that. Have you not been listening? I have not been listening. No, no. I have not. No, but uh, just uh, just that I'm I'm surprised before you actually s- selected your pick here that we hadn't talked about the fact that there's this huge four game series against Cleveland, and then right after we're facing KC, who. I don't know. They might match up against the Twins pretty pretty tough this time around. But uh, 
Greg, I think you should have yeah. gone with the controversial pick, but uh... well, ba- I mean, Bailey Ober is going to be pitching against Kansas City uh, oh. as it lines up, so there's definitely going to be at least one loss in that series. Loss. Yep, there's at least one there. Auto, auto loss. Okay, so I am going to. Say, <sighs> you guys picked a picked a pretty good range. I'm going to say the Twins will be tied with Cleveland. Tied. And both behind and both ahead of Kansas City, or is Kansas City? <laughs> Congrats on the point. division, Kansas City. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah, but uh, both five games back on KC. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yep. It's been a it's been a really eventful two weeks. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I said that the Twins would be tied atop the division with Cleveland. Greg said five games back. Adam said two games back. We'll see how it all shakes out. But for right now, we're going to move on for a quick version of Gregory's Grapes. Uh, I love love the music. Love that it's back. Uh, so uh, you can always count on Greg to have something grinding his gears. This is his therapy session to get it all off of his chest. Greg, my friend, you have the floor with your latest gripe that is sure to not upset or bore anybody. Before this Gregory's gripe, we have a word from our sponsor, the Chicago White Sox. Uh-oh. Can you wear a glove? Do you <laughs> run... Uh, moderately fast come please play the outfield for the chicago white Sox. everybody else has already packed up their stuff and gone home for the winter all right <laughs> chicago white Sox, please <laughs> <laughs> at 1-800 uh no no white Sox is eight letters never mind uh, wait, wait. um okay yeah so my gripe this week um joe mauer Everybody loves Joe Maurer. So I'm going to say something that will upset people about Joe Maurer. And this isn't me. This You guys know me. I only have legitimate gripes. I don't make these things up to upset people. If they are upsetting you, well, I can show you where the door is. Um, here's the deal. Joe Maurer, awesome. He got a first ballot Hall of Famer, blah, blah, blah. They announced this week after he was inducted into the Hall of Fame that they are building him a statue. And I've just got to say that that is bunk. There is no reason, there is no reason that a baseball player should get a statue because he's a really good baseball player. I, I, you know what? I'm not saying that the, like Joe Maurer has any skeletons in his closet, but it's always super embarrassing when they have to like tear a statue down because of something bad. I mean, it, it, statues to an um, to kind of immortalize somebody to kind of uh, you know be a bastion of whatever, and I don't think we should give them away to athletes. Like, what's what's the point? Like, what have you actually done that's good for the world other than you know uh, grounding into a six four three double play? Am I right? But I just I I don't call me an iconoclast if you want. I just don't think that there should be statues of professional athletes because like. Who cares? You you were good at playing a game. There's nothing like you didn't do anything noble. There's nothing that a child should like look up to you about. Like you're not a role model. You're just a really good baseball player. It doesn't make any sense why this is what we want to immortalize. You know, we should be immortalized. We should make statues for uh sheriff's departments and fire trucks and ambulances and uh the troops, right? Okay, those are the real heroes. And, and mothers. Mothers are also heroes. When are we going to have a statue for mothers? What if what if they made a statue for Joe Maurer and his mother? Maybe she's part of the statue too, you know. Well, no, no, I don't want to be a mother. Like just like mothers as a as a concept, right? As you a know? concept, just you a, know, a bag. Like um you know what the uh, Balto has a has a statue uh, once Joe Maurer brings medicine from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska by sled. He can get a statue, but until he's on Balto's level, he doesn't get a statue. Rocky How Balboa, do- he can get a statue because he's not real. But Sylvester Stallone, I don't want to see a statue of Sylvester Stallone. That's that's a good point. That's a, that's actually a really good point. I never thought about it like that. But you, you say that like we should be building statues of mortal men. What, what makes you think that, that Joe Maurer is mortal so far, all the evidence is pointed to the contrary. So uh, I don't know. If, I if, he was, disagree. 
if he was mortal or if he was immortal, he would have hit more home runs. He wouldn't have only oh. had the one season where he hit all those wall scrapers. Mm. He would have a lot of seasons where he hit wall scrapers that barely cleared the fence in left field, not just the one. And another thing, he got paid too much. You know, all that, oh, that salary and the bilateral leg weakness and the um, the the catch it, hit the brain injury. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that, okay, that that was a bit, I swear. But the the rest of it, the I I'm a Joe Maurer supporter, I swear, I swear. But the rest of it, that's 100 percent legit. A real gripe from your old pal Greg. Well, folks, you know it's a good good bit when you have to admit that it was a bit at the end of it. No, uh, no, only part of it was a good. bit. Just there was just a bit of a bit. <laughs> yes, yes. A little bit of a bit. A little bit of a bit. Just a um, little. Okay, well, Greg, thank you for getting that off your chest. Uh, listeners, do you have a gripe that you'd like to air out? Please hit us up on Twitter at Twins Off Daily or at Greg T. Masterson if you want to release some steam. It, maybe it's about this episode. Maybe it's about Greg himself. Please let us hear it. Greg can take it, uh, and uh, we'll make sure to build a statue of him uh, if he can get through. Please all. don't. <laughs> but for right now, let's move on to our last segment, which is the closer. Okay, so we are going to do another round of hot seats, which is where I give each uh, sorry each contestant is assigned a hypothetical uh, is assigned a hypothetical, and they need to wriggle out of it. Uh, we get to decide if they keep their job at the end of it based on their answers. Uh, let's start with let's go with Adam. You are going to be Derek Falvey. Uh, the league allows a purge style 24 hours where trades are allowed again. We have a new trade deadline and it is uh, the it is Thursday at 11:59 p.m. You get exactly one day to make some trades. You're Derek Falvey with this exact scenario. Joe Ryan got pulled from his start. How do you approach it given this injury concern? Derek Foley might not do anything because oh. he likes value um, and they're pretty weak right now. But in this hypothetical where anything's possible, I'm talking to Chief Polad and asking him for some money. And I'm making two calls, one to Farhan Zaidi in San Francisco, and I am going for the most, um, you know, Nobody likes watching Blake Snell pitch, but Blake Snell gets out, so I'm calling about Blake Snell and risking having his opt-in for a gazillion dollars next year. The other call I'm making is uh, for a reunion. Um, from, I'm calling Toronto to reunite with Jose Barrios. Um, again, Chief Polad's going to have to open up the checkbook uh, for next year, but... Um, He's a good pitcher, and uh, people love him here. He seems to love it here. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense. Okay. I, I just did the quick math, and I think that you just added 50% to the <laughs> Twins' payroll. <laughs> I believe uh, that they make $60 million between It's the only one or the other. other. It's one or the people. other. But, um, okay. Well, let's start with Snell. What do you think is like an appropriate trade package or trade offer that you would – offer up to San Francisco, assuming let's say that they don't eat any money or just a reasonable amount or something. I mean, I think that you are, you are eating so much risk um, with the opt-in that I think you would probably start with Emmanuel Rodriguez, um, which would suck. Um, but Emmanuel Rodriguez, unfortunately, um, <laughs> has the problem that many other Twins prospects have had of not staying on the field, sadly. So that's one, you know, that might start there, might start with Luke Keyshaw, depending on the Giants' um, preferences. Luke Keyshaw kind of seems like a Giant to me. Um, trading with Farhan you know, scares me because of Sam Dyson and um, Lamont Wade. Yeah. But, um, Fair enough. They're not that good, so he can't be that good. <laughs> okay. All right. And just real quick, how about Barrios? What do you think? I think it would probably be a better no, package, similar, you got to think, right? Similar, but they might ask for Brooks. I mean, Barrios is probably, I think, front offices probably like him more, given he's a more traditional pitcher who doesn't walk 
whatever like snow walks for nine. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I think people, I think you would have had a lot of support for that, but uh, terribly, horribly unrealistic. Uh, yes. Greg, what do we think? Somebody else's money. That's yeah. Right? Ridiculous. No, I don't know. I mean, this is Blake Snell. The He now throws, in his last one starts, he's averaging nine innings. Um, he's a workhorse now. Um, so shout out Blake Snell. Um, yeah, I mean, if if I had if this was OOTP and like uh you know maybe like the you know there was an ownership change during the middle of the year and you got a financially like uh spendy owner and all of a sudden you had 60 million dollars, I would go ahead. I don't know if I would give up Emmanuel Rodriguez. I mean, I, I just feel like you could get a better deal if you're telling San Francisco that you will take the rest of Snell's contract and they aren't on the hook with him. I believe, what are they, 504th in the West, only ahead yeah. of the Rockies. Um, so I think that you could probably get Snell for a little bit less than that. But, you know, I, I, would, I would love to see this happen. Sure. Greg, what do we think? Uh, does Adam, as uh, Derek Falvey, does he get to keep his job with this? I, I give him an A or a, a passing grade. I don't know if it's okay. an A, but he passes. Congratulations. Well you have not been fired, Adam Falvey. Congratulations. Uh, let's move on to our second hypothetical here for Mr. Greg. You are David Popkins, the Twins hitting coach. You are given the magical ability to teach just one and exactly one Twins hitter to hit from the opposite side of the plate. Who do you go with? Uh, and so in doing this, they completely switch sides of the plate. Okay, I was, yeah, I was current nice. side, and they go, they get just one side, and it has to be flipped. Okay, because I was, I was thinking about this, all right, like when I when I read this and you said it, like it would be cool to actually t- like you kind of think about lefties and switching them over to be righties. But if you could like take a right-handed hitter, like somebody like Royce Lewis. And you say, okay, he's a switch hitter now, and he's like 10% better against righties and retains what he's doing against lefties. Like that is a le- like that is a an incredible piece of your lineup. But if if we're saying we're permanently switching them, um, I'm a, I'm of the opinion that lefties are cheating the game of baseball. Like you don't have to be good. Uh no. You do have to be good, but you don't have to be nearly as good a hitter as a lefty as than you do as a righty because you just always face righties. I think it's ridiculous. I think that more needs to be made of like lefties are like cheating the game. Like it's not even fair. Um, That's our episode title. Lefties are cheating the game. <laughs> like right-handed hitters have to work so much harder to be good at the game than lefties. And that's why, you know, that's part of the reason that these splits are so bad. So I, it, you would have to take a, a lefty, um, especially if you want Rocco to play him every day, that spreadsheet. Oh, there's no, oh. no lefties allowed. Um, so you're down to what? Walner, Larnick, Kepler. I mean, I te- guess technically Julian, um, technically Kirilov. I don't know. I might be a prisoner of the moment right now, and Walner is just going crazy. Uh, but at the same time, like Kepler would be a better all. Uh, no, you know what? I like big dudes who ding dongs. Let's let's go with Walner. I would teach Matt Walner to hit right handed, have him be an everyday player, and just go mash. Uh, more, uh, yeah, I, I think that more more opportunities to watch Matt Walner either strike out or hit a ball five hundred feet. That I'm signing up for that. Yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could have gone with that. Um, that'd be a fun one. I, another answer I thought was maybe Jose Miranda turning into a left-handed hitter to, if we're just talking strictly yeah. this year with Carlos Santana, yeah. which I think there's a lot of ballyhoo about the difference in production for Santana between right side and left side. But doesn't he still have he's like a 105 OPS plus? He's still five percent better than league average from the left side. It's just considerably you know worse than his really good numbers is he, from the uh, maybe side. i've been a prisoner of the moment on that i didn't realize i thought it was closer uh, maybe that was a few weeks ago I maybe i'm dealing like, fake news. like 85 like 15 percent below league average but maybe i'm fake news in this but uh either way jose miranda 
Jose Miranda as a platoon partner with Carlos Santana from the right side would be a heck of a of a tandem there at first base. But Adam, what do we think? Do we like Greg's answer enough that he gets to keep his job as the Twins magical genie slash hitting coach? Yeah, I love it. I'm just picturing Aaron Judge now in the Minnesota Twins. So oh, okay, All that right. sounds pretty good to me. I guess more strikeouts, but you know, um, yeah. he's getting better in that department. Big boy hits ding dongs from the right side of the play. I really think uh, Aaron Judge makes uh, makes a lot of sense for the Matt Walner flipping around uh, sides um, player comp. Yeah, and for the long term, I think that would be pretty fun to have Matt Walner as a righty. Uh, you know, for, for a few years, but uh, congratulations, Greg, you get to keep your job for now, Mr. Greg Popkins. Um, Producer well, Lenny gonna... uh, just sent me a message. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're right. Oh, so he actually is just 1% below league average as a, as a left-handed hitter. He's got a, a 99 there, um, but he's 47% above league average from the left side. So that's right. probably playing into it. Just the, that is, that is a comically large gap for a switch hitter. Sure. And especially, you know, someone in probably, let's be honest, the twilight of their career, uh, for sure. how, how long can he kind of hang on to that? But uh, like I said, a lot, a lot of ballyhoo about his splits when it's like, okay, even his, his short side is not, not that, you know, detrimental to the team when all is said and done. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, we're running out of time here. Let's go back to our walk-off question, which was, what is the best job at the ballpark? Uh, I think the one that I would have the most fun with is like the music coordinator or like the crowd coordinator, whatever it is, game presentation. Uh, I think that they put the crowd under such a spell, uh, even when the vibes are low, you know, uh, Pablo Lopez and Royce Lewis could collide and both are taken off on stretchers. The twins are down 15 to one in the fifth inning and it's pouring rain. Uh, The vibes are just terrible. If the crowd hears everybody clap your hands, clap, 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 clap. Like all the hands come up together. Like, like they're under some trance. And I think that would be such a fun job to have or just, I can make your hands clap, 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 clap. Like people, they hear that. And it's like a, it's like a what is it a sleeper cell or whatever a sleeper yeah. agent like coming to life uh so i think that would be a fun job to have adam what do you think what's what would be a good job to have at the ballpark i think there's i had two ones kind of you know more fun than the other the first is mascot um i know greg yeah. has his <laughs> i'm sure his you'd be a much better with, mascot than that sot tc with that great with the great dc and then the other one is you know team is president or whatever <laughs> Um, whatever Joe Polad's title is, having that much power, I think would, would be nice. Um, if I were a uh, player, <laughs> I would open up the checkbook and the twins would have um, Yoshinobu Yamamoto on their injured list. I'm sure. I'm sure you'd give I, I hadn't all thought your about money. That is a ballpark job, but yeah, you, that is a job that you do have at the ballpark. So good on you. Greg, what do we think? What do you got for for a job at the ballpark? You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. My dream job as a kid was a a peanut vendor. Uh, I thought that that would be the greatest job in the world. Uh, Just go to the ballpark every. I didn't realize that you actually had to like yell things and you know. I I thought you could just hang out at the ballpark and whatever. Um, I I thought about mascot, but I might hit myself with a hammer if I was the mascot uh, just out of confusion. I think that the best job at the ballpark is like the security people on the field because oh. there you rarely have something happen where you're actually needed. We haven't had like a uh, throw things on the field thing. Uh, I do want to put out a, a hot or like a red alert. Like I think that so there uh Sorry, this is a total tangent as we're like trying to close up the show. But in Oakland, the last game at the Oakland Coliseum, they're handing out miniature. They used to do this with like uh, the Metrodome and and, um, the old Met, like miniature figurines of the Coliseum that are like ceramic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like we might see a bunch of those hit the field uh, during (laughs) the last game at the Coliseum. Those Oakland fans getting rowdy one more time. Just just. 
tuck that away as like that's a future prediction um, to keep in mind. But like I said, uh, when you're talking about a security guard, you rarely, rarely have to do much of anything. You just kind of like sit in your seat during the play. When there's a break, you walk out like 20 feet and you, you know, do your little stance thing. But, you know, a couple times a year, some you know, some d dr dumb drunk guy decides to jump over the fence and do his little thing. And a security guard gets to light him up. And I would love to a couple times a year have a moment in the open field where I get to try and catch that little guy who's running around all squirrely. I would love to have that job at the ballpark. It's a great answer. You know, going off your your mention there of things that could be thrown on the field, there's a reason why they uh, pass light bulbs out on the way out of the stadium <laughs> when they do that handout. And I think that's exactly why. But before people start throwing things at us, I think we should probably wrap this episode up. Um, Let's take a quick look ahead at the schedule. The Twins come home for a four-game series against the first-place Cleveland Guardians starting on Friday, uh, and then three against Kansas City before going on another road trip. Uh, the date of our next planned episode is Thursday, August 22nd. It feels like such a long time. We are desperately going to miss you all. Please just keep listening to, uh, to this episode on repeat. Uh, I think it'll do us all some good. Um, but on oh, behalf of – charts. On Yes. Uh, Mr. Greg and Mr. Adam, are there any last thoughts you'd like to have or anything you'd like to plug before we take I off? mean, this, when we do get back together in uh, 13 days, it's going to look, uh, I don't know, the vibes could be anywhere. This, yeah. is a, this is a big stretch of games, and I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah. It's easy to be excited. Um, so hopefully we're not five games back of the Royals in, in, um, in a few weeks, a couple of weeks. <laughs> Well said, my friend. But on behalf of everybody here at the Twins Off Daily Podcast, thank you so much for listening. Please share with your friends. Get more people involved. We love hearing from our fans, our crowds, our hordes of fans that 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 cry out for our work. Um, but until next time, thank you very much and stay sweet.